All right then, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, everyone's asked for it, so here it is. Megan RS review. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna try and give everyone as much of an in-depth understanding of this car as I can. We'll compare it, especially, this is a sport model, we'll compare it to the Trophy, which I've driven extensively. Um, yeah, I'll give you guys my opinions on it. We'll take it for a drive down some country lanes. I'm in my usual spot where I always start reviews. Um, but just down there, we've got some nice country lanes, so we'll do that. Um, it is absolutely filthy because it is the middle of winter here in the UK. It is two degrees outside um, and it's just really difficult to keep a car clean. Uh, but nonetheless, we'll do our best. So I'll start with a little walk around, show you guys the car. Um, obviously, even though it's absolutely filthy, it's a lovely looking thing. I think this is the best angle. Right back here, looks mean. Uh, center exhaust's really cool, the diffuser. It looks really wide and beefy here. Again, ignore how disgusting it is. Um, yeah, so just like with my mini review, the key differentiator between the models is the brakes. So you can see this is a Sport, so it's got the silver Brembos. Uh, the Trophy has a slightly different Brembo setup. Um, but later on in the video, we'll talk more about why I think the Sport's actually the one to go for. Trophy will have a little bit down here that says Trophy, which we do not have. Uh, yeah, it's a lovely looking car. 245 tyres all the way around. Um, these are Bridgestone SW01s. Absolutely useless in the wet and the cold, which it very much is today. <laughs> so we'll see how we get on there. Uh, but yeah, I'll show you the interior next. Uh, this car has the optional Alcantara interior. So it's got the Alcantara buckety seats, but these are still heated, which is just great, <laughs> especially this time of year. Uh, this is an auto. Now, before everybody loses their minds, I know, I know. I'm a big manual fan myself. Um, the facelift model only comes in the EDC six-speed DSG auto. Um, once we start talking about the engine, I'll tell you more about that gearbox and how pleasantly surprised I was. But um, yeah, it's, I know it's an auto, but we'll get to it. Uh, but yeah, uh, let me sit down and I'll give you a proper look at the interior. Guess we've kind of gone over the exterior now. <laughs> yeah, so you get the big vertical uh, screen, which is really nice. Uh, one great thing about this car is that the built-in maps are actually Google Maps. So I almost never find myself using Android Auto because it's got Google Maps in the screen, which is pretty great. I almost never use an inbuilt sat-nav on a car, but this one's been really good. Uh, Bose stereo, sounds great. I'll give you, let's fire her up. Hold my open window for this. Door. <laughs> yeah, sounds all right. That's just the regular mode. We'll get into sport later on. But, um, yeah. Uh, digital screen is really nice. Uh, you've got different modes. You can, have your, you can have your map in the middle. You've got loads of settings, especially in sport mode. You get loads of different dials and stuff. It's all very cool. But all of this stuff is not why you watch Nicholas Patrico drives cars. It's because you want to see how the car performs. <laughs> so what I'll say is, let's get out onto some better roads, um, and then I'll tell you more about it. See you there. Right then, engine and powertrain. <laughs> We've got a little country lane here. So what I'll do is I'll put it in sport, switch it to manual, and I'll just give a little demonstration. <laughs> This is real life, so we have to deal with things like cyclists and people running on the wrong side of the road, but that's okay. Thankfully, we've got plenty of power. <laughs> uh, today is really cold, as you can tell. It's four degrees now, but it was uh, like freezing overnight, so the roads are not in the best condition. Uh, so the heroics will be minimal today. We will not go crazy, but I just wanted to show you guys 
does sound good this car it does sound fantastic <laughs> and you can see that gearbox we needn't have worried it is a lovely lovely box one of the things that sold me on this car more so than almost anything else um, was the sound that it makes I think for a four cylinder there is not another four cylinder I can think of that sounds even remotely close to this like S3s and Golf R sound okay um, there, there might be some classic stuff like 80s Escorts, 90s Escorts maybe Evos but I think this is now someone's going to crucify me and come up with some, something better in the comments I guarantee it I think this is the best sounding stock four cylinder car maybe ever made definitely made today though um, there's some Alfa Romeos from like the 70s that sound really good too but I think this car sounds epic and it's one of my favourite parts of the car um, the engine makes great power it makes 300 horse uh, which means on a back road you can actually use it like you saw me use it there um, the way the power band works is you've got a fair amount of torque from like two and a half all the way up to red line so that engine's really flexible you can use it at whatever rpm you want pretty much but one great thing about the way they've designed it is it does pull harder right towards red line so you can really work the, the red line's actually at 6500 it looks like seven but it's not um you can really work this engine at the top half of the rpms you will see, I mean, even in my POV videos, nobody called me out on it, but I was kind of conscious of the fact I never really went above four and a half thousand because, like, realistically on the road, you really don't need to. Um, but there is a reward out there for doing it. Uh, I've had this car around Brands Hatch. It is phenomenal, again. Um, and that's where you really feel the benefit of those... Um, like the extra RPM right at the top end. There's some bumps around here, but what I'll do is after we get through them and we get onto a straight bit of road with no one behind me, which there isn't, I will give it a squirt in second and take it right out to red line and you'll see what it's like. I think we have a little straight after this. Can we call that a straight? We can call that a straight. Road is greasy. Let's see if we get traction in second. No. <laughs> okay, we'll do it in third. <laughs> We'll do it in third. <laughs> no traction. <laughs> um, you can see, like, okay, fair enough. I only went up to like five. It's it, the car has so much power, and it's four degrees out, okay. And it is front wheel drive. You can't blame it for losing traction at, at, in that kind of circumstance. Point is, car has plenty power for the road today, um, especially for a front wheel drive hot hatch. It is, it is rapid. It's fast. Um, part of the traction issue are the Bridgestone tyres, um, which will be getting replaced with Pilot Sport 5s. Right then, onto the gearbox. Ah, it is lovely. Like, look. It's just... Oh, wow. Right, we have some hazards. Yikes. <laughs> Big yikes. Wouldn't want to drive through that at 60. Um, but yeah, the gearbox is fantastic. It is... I was so worried about driving an auto. But it, I really needn't have. Because this auto is really, really good. When it's in regular mode, you leave it in drive. It shuffles through the gears. There's, you don't have a worry in the world. Engine and transmission... I am very, very happy. Renault have done a great job. We should add the fact, uh, the history. Um, I don't know if many of you know this, but um, with the engine, so the car originally came out as a 280, uh, 280 BHP, and it had a slightly different head and a slightly different turbo. When Renault came to make the trophy, um, they wanted to upgrade the engine for 300 horsepower. They couldn't get some, I, I forget exactly what it is, but they couldn't get access to some sort of some facilities at Renault. So what they did is they went to the F1 team, back then it was still Renault, it wasn't Alpine, 
and they used their facilities. So essentially, the Renault F1 team helped develop this engine. I think it was for the head and for the turbo. Um, that's just cool, isn't it? Like that's that's the that's the stuff petrol heads like. Right then, so everyone might be wondering at this point, Mick, it's been like 10 minutes and you haven't addressed the title of the video, Sport versus Trophy. Well, it's all coming in this section. The biggest differences between the Sport and the Trophy model RS Megans are a limited slip diff at the front, a small tweak to the brakes, and the suspension setup. So I've driven a trophy extensively and I can tell you on the types of roads I drive, British B roads, right? Potholed messes with bumps and lumps. You, the camera has stabilization so you can't quite see what I'm experiencing here, but there's a lot of bumps and stuff in these roads. The trophy was not comfortable here. The trophy is comfortable on a track day where the road is completely smooth, there are no bumps, and you just want to be as stuck down to the surface as physically possible. But this car, the Sport, is a little bit different. It works with the road so much better. Now, I, I know, for, for whatever reason in today's world, Suspension tuning and caring about suspension is not sexy, right? People don't love it. People love to talk about power and they love to talk about other stuff. But nobody really pays attention to suspension. But on the road, for a fast road car, it is probably the most important aspect of the car. That's why I chose the Sport, because it, it's just fantastic. The way it works with the road and absorbs the impacts and just you can continue your momentum without being slowed down or jarred by the imperfections in the road is honestly something else. I can barely see where I'm going right now. <laughs> um, yeah, it just feels so good. Like bumps like that, it's unfazed by. It does not care, <laughs> um, which is just a world away from what I used to experience in my Mini. My Mini was a very, very jittery car. Um, it would always bounce around and it was never really settled. Uh, this is probably the most settled car I've ever sat in. Uh, yeah. More and more cars nowadays want to be stiff. They want to, I don't know whether it's the Nürburgring times or what it is, but even base models of cars, they're just far too stiff. Um, and that's not to say that the suspension on this car is soft, because it's not. It's firm and it's taut, but it, it just has a compliance that the trophy doesn't. So I think on a B road, this car will be faster than the Trophy because the mid corner bumps will throw the Trophy off and your confidence will be affected. Whereas in this car, because of the compliance of the suspension, not because it's soft, because it's not, but the compliance gives you so much confidence to absolutely attack a corner, uh, it's just great. It, it's it's absolutely great. Now, you don't get an LSD. And you may have seen in the engine part, me just lighten up the front tires. I know for a fact that would also happen in the trophy. It looks exaggerated here, but guys, it's five degrees out and it's only like 9 a.m. Overnight, it was zero or minus one. The, the roads are a mess. Every front wheel drive car with 300 horsepower is gonna... <laughs> is gonna just light up the front wheels. There, there's no way around that. You can't put that much power through the front wheels and not do that 
in these conditions, LSD or not. Now, there is a benefit to the LSD, of course, where it pulls you out of corners and it does feel really good in the trophy. The problem is, that's the trophy's problem. It has this, there's benefits and there's negatives. And yes, the LSD is a benefit, but the suspension takes so much away that it, it's, it just doesn't feel worth it. Which is a shame because the trophy is the one that's a bit more exotic, that's a bit more petrol head, you know? But, I mean, look at this fucking car. <laughs> We're this far in the video, and you might be asking, Mick, you haven't even spoken about the car's biggest feature, the four-wheel steer. Uh, well, we're into driving dynamics now, and I definitely will. The four-wheel steer is controlled by the driving mode. So where I'm in sport now, the four-wheel steer will engage... One second, there's a big bump here. Wait. The four-wheel steer will engage up to 36 mile an hour. But, should we go into race mode, it will engage all the way up to 60 miles an hour. Now, at first, like many of you, I thought, eh, four-wheel steer, bit of a gimmick, does it really make that much of a difference? It really does. So because this car is quite wide and quite long for a hatch, it has a big footprint on the floor, on the ground. So you would think this car would be a bit lumbering, a bit big, but the four wheel steer helps it stay so, so nimble. So it turns in a lot harder than you might expect it to. And the mid corner grip is also just really, really good. And that's all down to the four wheel steer. And you can feel the difference when you switch back to sport. Now, even in sport at lower speeds on really slow corners, you can feel it tightening your line especially in race mode up to 60 mile an hour which is realistically the speed you're going to do on country lanes it just feels so good and it makes such a difference because the wheels turn opposite directions so essentially you're shortening the car's wheelbase and it, it ends up having that mini effect where because the wheelbase is so short the car just darts into in and out of corners and it feels really really agile it also feels like you need less steering input to get around corners when the four-wheel steer is engaged. And then on the motorway at 70, you can genuinely feel it helping you crab across the lanes, um, which is just a really nice feeling. Um, overall, I think it's brilliant. One more thing about this car's dynamics, because this car does something not... I don't think I've ever been in a car that does this thing. What it is, is the rear wheels on this car feel incredibly independent. So you hear a lot about cars having independent rear suspension, but I've driven like EP3 Type R and the, the cars that, you know, get praised for their um, fully independent rear suspension. But I've always felt like when you hit a bump in one of those cars, it feels like it affects the whole car at the rear. But with this car, it has this weird effect where if you hit a bump on one of the rear wheels, you can feel that rear wheel move up and down, but it doesn't unsettle the rest of the car. Now, I think a lot of that might have to do with the suspension tuning, because again, like I mentioned earlier, the suspension in this car is just fantastic. But it's something that I've never really experienced in another car, which is very cool. Um, we'll talk a little bit about steering now. So, journalists have not given this car the best time when it comes to steering. Um, saying it feels a little bit artificial. I will say, it's not as good as a... Oh, that is a lot of... No, that's fine. Sorry, I thought there was a bunch of dirt on the road. It's not as good 
as a Civic Type R steering. That steering communicates in a way that not many cars do. But it's, it's good steering. It gives you a little bit of feedback. It's just a touch numb. It's missing that last little bit but it's really good. It's very well weighted. Um, you can feel the tire forces load up as you're in a corner like right now. You can feel everything the car is doing. It just doesn't have that last percent of, of communication. But overall, it's actually really surprisingly good steering. Um, it's also very quick. The rack is fantastically quick. You can see how little input I need to get around corners. Now the four wheel still the four wheel steer does help that. It's more exaggerated when you're in race mode. But still like it feels great. I really could not complain about the steering of this car. Um, and when you consider the fact that when you turn the wheel you're actually turning all four wheels. It's it's something to get your head around but it does add something to the enjoyment of driving the car, of piloting the car, because you know when you turn the steering wheel, you're actually turning four wheels as opposed to just two. It's kind of cool. Just about to go into the final thoughts, but first, I've got a lovely bit of clear country lane ahead of me. So I'm going to give you guys the opportunity to watch me absolutely brutalize this country lane. We're just going to build up a bit of a gap. There isn't anyone really in front of me, but the road doesn't start for a little bit. So we'll give it a second of time. Uh, the road is nice and dry now, so I wonder if I can plant my foot in second and not lose traction. Let's find out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, big smile. Shifts in race mode are nasty as well. <laughs> Especially at full throttle. You really feel them in your back. <laughs> Never touched on the brakes. Phenomenal. <laughs> I'll anchor down into this corner and you'll see just how good they are. Not this one, the next one. You can see I'm going into this corner quite hot. Watch the brakes. Phenomenal. <laughs> Everything just slid forward in the car. <laughs> Careful van. You get used to that on a British B road. Gotta say, I like this car. What better final thoughts can you get than this little clip, eh? Ah, oh, the road's lovely and dry. The tires have warmed up a little bit. Brakes are nice and warm too. Everything's sliding around. <laughs> British B lane, they just forget what lanes are. <laughs> They're always in your fucking lane. Oh, yeah. Gotta say, I do like this car though. How could you not? Look, it's got its little flaws. Yes, this model doesn't have an LSD, but I think what you gain in how the car just dealt with all those roads there is more than worth it. I really think the Sport is a better proposition than the Trophy. Um, yes, I might have had a bit more traction out of corners there, but I didn't struggle for traction out of corners there, so I don't really understand what I'm missing. Yes, on a track, you will get a few extra percent, but on the road, the compliance in the suspension is so, so worth it. And all the other aspects of the car 
are equal between the two. So you just gotta choose, would you rather the road biased setup or the track biased one? And for me, I do a track day once in a blue moon, maybe a couple times a year. This is what I do most weekends. So I would rather have a car that is just unshakable out here than one that gives me the few extra percent on a track day where the people in the Turbo MX-5s are faster than me anyway. <laughs> so that's my thoughts on the Megane RS 300 Sport versus Trophy. Uh, let me know your comments down below. Uh, if you've made it this far in the video, give me a like. Uh, subscribe to the channel. We're already at more than 100 subscribers, which I honestly never thought we'd achieve. Um, but we're doing great. I really appreciate the support. You guys' comments warm my heart. <laughs> um, yeah, I really appreciate each and every single one of you. So thank you for watching. Um, yeah, peace.